so many task systems don't work for me as someone that doesn't have a deadline job. Most of them are just very much based on dates and this is not the way that I work. What I want is a system that you can multi-select and you can go to next week and then your tasks just go away and then they reappear next week. And only Outlook's task system is the one I've been able to customize to do this. So that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. By the way, if you also wanna mark something as complete, you can just click on something and press mark complete or click the insert button in your keyboard with the system. My name is David Benam. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Outlook, Zoom, Teams. If you're using a particular workplace that I'm covering on my channel. So for starters, what you need to do is click on here and choose tasks, and that will open it up like this. And you'll see a sidebar and you'll see the tasks window here. You wanna right click and pin it so that even when you go to something else, it stays there. Next up, what you wanna do is actually add the taskbar on the right. So if you go to view, you can choose to do bar and choose tasks. And then it's over here. Now the default here isn't really very good. For example, you never wanna see tasks that are in the future. What you wanna do is be able to multi-select tasks and click something so they disappear until you have to do them next time. I have also got categories, you'll see that in these colors, but I want it grouped by categories rather than grouped by the day because for me that is not very useless as someone who does a non-deadline specific job usually. If I click on any one of these, I go to categorize and then all categories, then I get the list here and I can edit them and create new ones. Now, if you go to new, you can choose a name. Now, what I tend to do is I choose a different color from what I've had before and I start with this keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to do F6 and I'm going to do do outside. So it's a task that you need to do outside so that you know that you're always on the go when you do it and put the shortcut key to be control F6. I don't put control because it's always control. So I just know those. I press OK and I add it there. And then if I press OK here, if I want to get something in that category, I can click on it and choose categories and choose the one that I just added there. And it'll add this color there, which is actually similar to this one. So I probably would do something different. I can also go to it from here, all categories, and then you can get back to the edit view. Now, in terms of which categories you should and shouldn't have, there's lots of schools of thought. One of them is that it's good to do how long it takes a task. So 10 minute tasks or whether it's longer tasks. So these two in particular, this is because if something is a 10 minute task, you know, you can squeeze it in, in between projects. And if something is a longer task, then I do F9 AM, note that I have ways to remember things. F10 is 10 minute tasks. Um, 9 AM being that the theory goes that if you have longer tasks, then you're gonna keep putting them off unless you start them as soon as you enter the office, which for me is 9 AM. So that's why I do F9 and that's why I have it there. Another school of thought is uh, something you should have is to read something that's gonna take you longer to read and you do it when you're on a train or something like that, or when you've just got a big chunk of time waiting. These are maybe emails that you've sent out, like a proposal and you're waiting for a reply. Then Pinboard, this is something that you wanna be able to go back to. For example, if I have an upcoming meeting and I know that I'm gonna discuss something in there, I put that in the Pinboard. These can be for emails and for tasks because it's very easy to convert tasks to emails as I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, do outside or something that you might need to spend a big chunk of time to do together, that could be a thing. And then you've got must finish today and must finish this week. So put F7 is this week, because seven days in a week, easier to remember. Perpetual, these are things that are kind of always in my list. So I have here like login details or a list of the, the YouTube videos I wanna make. And that's something that is collapsible and you'll see how it appears much better when I have them going on like that. You can of course multi-select things but in my system, I don't really allow for that because then it's going to duplicate it. But of course, you can do that quite easily. All right, so now that we've got this, how are we going to get this to appear the way that I love my task list to appear? A few different steps. So we're going to click on this, and then we're going to choose View Settings. This is the default. We're going to go away from the default. So in Columns, although it says all these things, I don't tend to see them. I see only the task name, the, the flag. And this one, the flag is kind of useless in this view because I've already got it in today. So to simplify this, I'm gonna to go to columns and I'm just going to remove everything except the task subject. And I'm going to add one more, which is icon. Icon I find pretty useful. There we go. So it's just gonna be these two and we'll see what that looks like immediately. So it's just this, essentially this means it's a recurring task. This means it's a regular task. If there's no icon, that means it's an email that I flagged. 
and you can convert an email into a, a task just by flagging it or clicking the insert button in your keyboard. I'll show you that in a sec. Now, next up, we're going to do the big one, which is view settings, and we're gonna go to filter. And in advance, we're gonna keep these two, and we're gonna add some more. So we're gonna go to field, and we're gonna choose task fields, and we're gonna choose start date. There we go. And we're going to say anything that does not exist, we're going to add that to the list and we're going to choose again we can just write start date as long as you type it exactly and we're going to say on or before and we're going to say today this is super useful because what this means is that any task that is going to be after today so any task that i delay is not going to show me on the list so i'm going to press ok and i'm going to press ok again so for example let's say i have this dundee fringe sales and i want to postpone this. If I press next week, this is going to disappear off the list. And for me, that is something that I have not been able to find a task system that allows you to do that. You can multi-select and you can click tomorrow and then these will all disappear until tomorrow, which is really, really fantastic. Next, we're going to go to group by and we're going to untick automatically and choose categories. Press OK. And then we're going to go to other settings. And for me, this is a bit small. So I like to do 10 points for both of them. Keep the other settings the same. Press OK. And uh, now what you'll see is that they go red if they're overdue. But as we've already established, for anything that's non-deadline specific, overdue doesn't really matter. And so they are smaller, and that's kind of ugly. But we're going to get rid of that in a second. And anything that is really deadline specific, I do put in the must finish today or must finish in a week to do in a week. So those two categories, which for me is control F7 like that, because honestly, even if it is deadline specific, then if it's more than a week away, I don't need it in my immediate to do list, or at least it doesn't need to be that the thing that defines it is that it is due in more than a week. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose view settings and conditional formatting. This makes them look different based on what's in them and the overdue tasks are in red. So I just untick overdue tasks. I keep all the other stuff because I find that useful. And there we go. Now we don't have the big scary red thing that's prompting me away from it. Now I don't tend to use all of these categories at one time. I've gone kind of through things that I like using because for me, the most important thing is that you can see everything on one screen without scrolling down. Now for something like the pin board that I'm only gonna discuss at that meeting, I tend to keep this collapsed because that doesn't matter too much, but this is still a little bit too much for me. So I will go through them and categorize them and just decide that I don't need a lot of them to come up. For example, this is my month end tax process. I've just done the tax because month end was last week. So I don't need this to appear. So I'm just going to go to next week and then it's gone away. Perfect. And yeah, just kind of categorize them. You can categorize them by dragging and dropping. That's usually how I do it. Or you can categorize them by using the shortcut. Control F2 would be must finish today. Help this person with the booking, etc., etc. So yeah, that's kind of how I do it. And if you save it, then it will reload. You can also sync this to your phone. I wouldn't say the syncing to your phone is as good as other task apps. But I would say that I use my computer mostly. And for me, this is a godsend. Oh, how do we get an email over here? So let's say that I have an email. So here we go, I have a couple of emails. If you wanna get that into here, what you can do is just go to a tag, a follow-up tag of today, and it will pop up over there. If you want to change it, so this is flight details for my flight in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to mark this as pinboard. And in the pin board, I don't need to see it right now. So here I'm going to press next week and it's gonna go there. Next up, I'm going to change this one and I'm going to tag this. So this is kind of a to read thing. So I can also press the insert tab on my keyboard. I love doing that. I'm going to say read about event. And this is gonna go into to read like that. And then if you want to, you can move these wherever you want. They will still appear there. So I tend to move everything to archive by clicking the archive button. Now I have inbox zero, I have another video about inbox zero, and then I can just have them here and just see the ones I need to see. Remember, always try and go for something that you can see on one screen. 
All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is David Nyman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tickle the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. Thanks for watching.